in the previous lesson, we kind of got an idea of what slope meant. And just to kind of summarize it, slope is like the pitch or the incline or the decline of a line, how steeply it goes up or how steeply it goes down. And now we're going to be a little more precise in how we can put a number on that slope. And you're going to have to um, be proficient or really good at figuring out the exact numerical value of slope given certain sets of information. Uh, and they are, I kind of have the picture of all the things that you might be given and you should be able to figure out the slope. If you were given a picture of the graph and you just had a line going up, you should be able to figure out what the slope is. Um, and you might not have this information, but you can look at it and figure out what those coordinates are. That's one of the skills you have. Or given an XY chart, you should be able to figure out what the slope is. Uh, or given one set of ordered pairs, like 9, 6 from right here, and one of the intercepts, you can figure out what the slope is. So let's take those cases uh, individually and look at some examples of how it could work. If you're just given two ordered pairs, um, you can use a formula. It's a very handy dandy formula that says that the slope Remember this side is equal to rise over run. We want to be a little more precise with that and say that slope is the difference between the two y coordinates and the two x coordinates. So it involves a subtraction and a division. For instance, if I have the coordinates of 4, 8, and 9, I'm not thinking this ahead of time, so it's going to probably come out to be some fraction. So I have my two ordered pairs. Given two ordered pairs, what do you do? You compare the two y-coordinates to each other. So I'm going to compare the 10 and the 8, and then the 9 and the 4. And I do it with subtraction, so I'm going to take... Um, and I can do either any way I want to. I'll do it two ways. I can do 8 minus 10... But now it's important that since I took this first and put it here, I have to take this one, the 4, and subtract 9 from it. And you seem to be working with negative numbers when I do this. So that will equal uh, 2, negative 2, over negative 5, which gives me a positive 2 over 5. Because when you divide two negatives, you get a positive number. Now if I wanted to switch it around, I could have done it this way. It does. There's no... Um, right way to do this. There's two ways to do it, and then both of them are right. I should say it that way. I could do 10 minus 8, subtracting the two y coordinates. But once I pick this as the first number, it would be the menu n, if I wanted to be more precise. This is, um, this is the menu n, and this is the subtrahend. So once I do it this way, I have to go 9 minus 4, because I have to take uh, the 10 came first, so the 9 has to come first. And then I get 2 over 5, and I directly get a positive number. So that's how you find slope given two ordered pairs. I really like putting them right over top of each other like this, 4, 8, 9, 10. Because what that does, it kind of pairs them up in the way that you should be subtracting. These two get subtracted from each other, and these two get subtracted from each other. And you can kind of use that idea as we go through the different ways you figure out slope given according to what information you're given. So this is how you find slope given. Finding slope given a table, pretty simple. It's very much like what we just did. We've got three ordered pairs here. 2, 11, 4, 23, 0, negative 1. By the way, ordered pairs, it's the same. We use that term, and I don't know if I have defined it or not. But that's the same thing as coordinates. That's the location on the graph. So this would be over 2, let me point to it. Over 2, up 11. Over 4, up 23. Or over 0, down 1. So um, I can just take any two of these coordinates that I want to. And I'll, I'll, I'll do it a couple of ways. I'll go 2, 11, and 4, 23. And again, I'm using the strategy where I put them, um, I just align them. Now I have to be careful that I don't do... Um, I have to pick the right order here because it's it's the difference between the two y coordinates. So I can't go four minus two in the top of my um, what I'm going to do here. I'm just to make a division problem and do 23 minus 11. Oops. 23 
23 minus 11. Now since I put 23 first, I have to put 4 first here, or 4 minus 2. And that gives me, like this, because it's positive numbers. But sometimes slope is negative, but in this case it's a positive 6. And if I would have picked, uh, let me pick 423 and 0, negative 1. And I can do, I'm going to make it look like a, kind of weird here, and do negative 1 minus 23 over 0 minus 4. Now I'm going to make this plus negative 23, so I get, I've got 24 negatives. And 0 minus 4, I can make that if I wanted to, plus negative 4. Negative 24 over negative 4, it better be the same thing, which it is, it's 6. Um, if I would have wanted to, I'd just do it another way, just to prove we still getting the same answer. I could have done 23 minus negative 1 over 4 minus 0. I'm still using this set here. This would be plus positive, and that's 20, 24 over 4, which again is 6. So either, any way I do that, as long as I do the arithmetic correctly, I get the slope being 6, which it is. Okay, finding slope given the graph. Now, I did kind of cheat on this, and, and I kind of wished I hadn't, but so I did. Uh, just imagine that you didn't see the 2, 6, and 4, 10 in here, because once you do that, it's the same as finding the slope given two coordinates. But you pick, you have to pick a place on the graph where you can clearly see that uh, you've got whole number values. It's really nice to have whole number or integer values like over 2 up 6 right here is a really nice spot. And then this is a good one here because it crosses the horizontal axis and crosses the vertical axis at a certain point. You don't have to worry about uh, 4.1 or 4.5 or 10.5. That's why uh, that's kind of nice and I picked those spots. So once you have identified the coordinates you just use the same uh, technique that we used when we had when we knew two coordinates. We know 4.10 and 2.6. And I'm going to do 10 minus 6. It's just begging to be done here. 10 minus 6 over 4 minus 2. And we get 4 over 2 or 2. Slip of 2. Which means if you go um, over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 2. Or I could say, go, I could do it another way and say it means, let me make this a little bit larger. To get the slope, I go up 2 over 1. I need a different color here. Up 2 over 1. So that kind of gives me, that's what slope means, it's how far you go up compared to how far you go over. So up and over. The slope was 2. It's 2 over 1, by the way. That might be a good way to look at it. For every 2 you go up, you go over 1. Up 2 and over 1. Perfect. What if we had an ordered pair and one of the two intercepts? So, again, I'm going to contrive this so it may turn out to be kind of an ugly fractional number, but that's okay. So as we knew, our coordinates were uh, negative 6, 5, and the y-intercept was 3. Okay, what are you going to do? Well, you have to be, it's really easy to say, if I know the y-intercept, I know that if I go over 0 and up 3, that's where I'm going to be crossing the y-axis. So, boom, I have the two ordered pairs right there. So I'm going to do 5 minus 3 over negative 6 minus 0, and I get 2 over negative 6. That's not too bad, which is... Um, 1 over 3, and it's negative, negative 1 third. Or suppose I had, um, if I knew that the coordinates were 8, 2, and the x-intercept was 4. And that tells me if I go over 4, let's draw a picture of this. If I go over 4 and up 0, I have wherever this crosses the x-axis, and it would look like if I went um, over 8 up to, I kind of don't have enough room to show this, but over in this direction somewhere would be over 8 up 2. I'll put it in here, so you kind of get an idea of what this line might look like. Oops. Now 
Uh, something like this. Well, things aren't working too well for me here. Anyway, let me see if I can get this pen to work. Oh, that seems to be working again. Um, so at uh, 4, 0, I have the x-intercept. So I can do um, 2 minus 0 over 8 minus 4 and get 2 over 4 or a half. So the slope would be a half. And that's how you figure out the slope given the order pair and intercept. So given various kinds of information, you can always calculate the slope. But basically what you want to remember is it's x, oops, sorry. So want to go um, y1 minus y2 rise over run. And if you have coordinates, then you just plug them in this very famous algebraic formula.